Hi, Discover Church. I'm here with a very special friend, Dr. Dennis Lindsay, and their family and uh, their school, Christ for the Nation. I'm sure you've heard of it. Very uh, awesome school in Dallas, Texas. And it's just a pleasure to be here. I just thought, you know, let's just banter a little bit. Um, you said that you were watching some of my videos, and oh. I'm very flattered. What were you watching? Well, I've, I've seen so many. I remember I started out with Trump, you know, President Trump. It's many and, years and ago. Many it's years ago. And then from there, the one about Revelation and the the four horses. I mean, that. And I, I watched these, and I said, wow, my student body needs to hear this. So I, I have three classes that I teach, and I... We'll grab one of these videos. In fact, I just recently watched on Justice, and I said, what in the world? That's the best I've ever heard. So that's the next one I'm getting ready to show to our student body on Justice that this pastor, Steve, blesses me with, and I shared it with my mom, I mean my wife, <laughs> and I'm blessed. Every time I'm blessed, I give her a copy of whatever I want everybody to see. So he does this every now and then, and I watch one of his videos on one of his TVs. I just watched him on Daystar just recently, and I said, oh, yes, I know that. That's a powerful message of how he came as a Buddhist or per from Buddha and to Jesus. You need to hear that, a little testimony of how the Lord saved a Buddha serving person that didn't know who God was but brought him to Jesus. So, yes. That's what I do with my student body. That's awesome. So I, I didn't know that our videos, I know our videos get played by pastors in Indonesia and Malaysia. They tell me, you know, but I'm really impressed because uh, I love every time I've come on the campus of Christ for the Nation, I love the spirit of it. You know, the spirit of something yeah. that really matters, the heart of something. Everyone's teaching theology. They all got the, you know, the, the standard Bible classes, but the spirit of the campus is really great. And your father is, is very famous, very well known as you are. But um, I think something happened, I, I, and I want to kind of hear, I want our audience to hear, what was the voice of healing? How did it start? What was it like for, for you as a kid, as a son, to be part of that? And you kind of strayed away from that, didn't you? So there's a lot there, whatever you want to take. Yeah, basically in a nutshell, the Lord led my dad as a teenager to give up his love for science and the Bible, and uh, not science and the Bible, but science and astronomy, and he passed that on to me because the Lord told him, I want to lead you in some new areas of the Bible, which was has to do with the supernatural and the gifts of the Spirit. So dad began to study that and travel with ministers that knew about the supernatural side of God, of Jesus. Uh, tell us what year. That was in, in, the, in the 40s, back in the was, 30s and like 40s. At, at the end of World War II, the voice of healing started? Well, that's when 1946 was when I was born in 1948, the Lord said started, and it was 1948 when the Voice of Healing was founded, which is now Christ for the Nations, and Dad started that and began to travel and have healing ministries and revivals around the United States. And I heard all the famous healing preachers were involved in that, except, is it true, except Oral Roberts? No, we were very close with Oral Roberts. He was there. And he would, be, okay. he would come and he would speak at Christ for the Nations at our school. So, yeah, I grew up with uh, Richard Roberts, very close to them. That's awesome, because I, I feel like the, the modern church, even though it looks bigger and flashier, has kind of stepped away from the healing and the supernatural. Do you, do you feel that way? What oh, yeah, because uh, you get comfortable with all of the things that we have today from medicine and the healing of uh, the, the hospitals. I'm not comfortable with the COVID no, acts. No. I'm not uh, comfortable with the the fear virus exactly i'm not either I, I, that's what i called it i called it the fear virus and everybody said no 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 it's the crown virus no you got to understand what we're talking so about that's interesting you you think it's not a theological thing you think just because over time people get drugged they get oh absolutely schools, they they just become dependent on that rather than stretching their faith exactly and so i laziness i mean i grew up never going to the hospital or taking anything except maybe a, a little some sort of a little headache pill or something like that but i didn't have any of that i had a, a prayer a mom yeah. and a dad that prayed for me every time i was six yeah. and i have no problem praying for people even though that's not necessarily my gifting but i'll pray for anybody to receive healing i'm not afraid i saw miracles that you would not bully tell us tell us oh my goodness i mean one of them my dad was praying for people. I was there in the tent meeting. I was walking around. And then here comes a guy up on stage, and he has a short leg. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen many short legs my dad prayed for, and usually it's about this much. And so when they pray for him and they said, yes, I feel a healing, 
Well, then the dad would sit them down and move their feet, but you really couldn't tell whether there was a healing because you can move uh, two feet like that and sitting on a chair. But this guy yeah. had a 12 foot buildup of a shoe. Wow. And I remember seeing that and dad took off his- it's 12 inches maybe. Yeah, I mean 12, 13 inches, yes. And it was about this much. So dad took off his shoe, set him down and you could see that. And so he says, okay, let's pray and believe for a miracle here. And I still remember Lansing, Michigan. I still remember where the tent meeting was. And we began to pray, and then all of a sudden, Dad said, ah, ah, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And, all, and uh, everybody in that tent jumped up. And I remember standing right by the stage, so this is my dad's tent, and so I watched that thing grow out, just like that. And now I'm only like 12, 13 years of age. So, so I, I never have doubted the power of the living God to be able to heal. I saw that was just one. Yeah. And, I, and the one that I saw that really everybody wants to hear is when the guy has a glass eye and he can see with or without that glass eye and I would hold his glass eye. Ronnie Coyne was his name. I mean, that's one of the Ronnie miracles I say. Coyne. Ronnie Coyne, C-O-Y-N-E. You can go on the web and you can see that he'll and tell the story. The one holding I was, eye. I, I, I held it at no tent meeting. Is that a bit scary? He has no, eyes, no eye? No, the thing is, is he could see with or without that plastic eye. He lost it playing when a kid with barbed wire had it got caught in his eye, he jerked and he lost his eye sight, yeah. and he got healed by a lady that prayed for him. I still remember it. Yeah. And that's the rest of the story, and I saw that as a kid. Well, so how come you're a PK, preacher's kid, you saw miracles, and you still strayed away and you said you didn't read the Bible until you were older? Because it was scary. I was just a kid, and here are these evangelists, and I mean, they shouted and screamed, and that scared me. So I kind of was hit in the side. Well, then finally, I went on an outreach with Youth With a Mission that changed my life forever when I trusted the Lord to take care of me, and he did. Oh, my goodness. I went back to college, finished it, and then went into full-time ministry with Youth With a Mission. My life was changed dramatically. I started reading the Bible at that time. I'm still reading it. At that time, I was I had finished college, so I'm like 22 years of age. 22. That's you know, it's a number that follows me. 22. Number of end times. At 22, you come back to the Lord and you've been serving God continuously 60 years. Yes. No, that's too much. Well, 50 I mean, years. Uh, 50 years here at the school. I've been there 50 more, 54, 55 years here. Christ for the nations. If you, you know, I got 350,000 followers. Some of them are pastors, leaders all over the world. If you could say anything to the body of Christ in the end time, I know you're you're an end time buff. You were saying that you were an end time buff. What, yeah. What, what would you say? I mean, I grew up as a pre-trib, and so I, but I started traveling and meeting all these different denominations that have so many different views of when the Lord's coming back, and finally I just became, He's coming back. Just be ready in case He comes back today. So I don't know when he's coming back, and I just say, be ready. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and believe that, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. So I don't have to worry when he's coming back. Do you think the church in America is ready? Well, some people are. But again, by and large, we love the things that the enemy has offered us. It makes us nice and comfortable. And so we don't like the idea of go into all the world and preach the gospel. We like to go into our pews and sit in our churches and have fellowship, yeah, that's good. But the thing is that changed my life when I left the pew of our church and I went out on a one outreach one summer and it changed my life. And that's why Christ for the Nations requires, we want our students not to just get the message of Jesus up here, that he's God, that he's coming again, that he rose from the dead, but we want it from here to down to here to the heart. And that will change you forever if you get it down here in the heart. You know, my life changed when I travel on missions and you see the miracles, you see blind eyes open, but you went on a quite extended mission. How many weeks was this mission that changed your life? Well, it was a six weeks. I did not want to go on it. Six weeks. Six weeks. Who made you go on it? Well, it was a youth. Uh, it was somebody in youth with a mission that I grew up with. He was a missionary's kid and he said, let's go. My coach wanted me to go. And I said, I really can't. I got to pay for my car. But anyway, God gave me 10 signs, short little things that told, that changed my life. I could not believe it. I wrote it out in my little book of 77 Supernatural Surprises from Jehovah's Sneaky. 
So that's what I, I did, and I went on that little six-week yeah. change, and it was a life-changing experience. Yeah, I recommend that. Everybody's got to get out. You know, America's so rich, so full of revelation, full of e everything, and, and we're just keeping it for ourselves, and I think that's going exactly. to turn us into the big Dead Sea of America. We have to give out what, what God has given us, and that's going to be the life and, and the help and the rescue of this nation is God's just waiting for us to go and give it, not just keep it, keep it, keep it until it's rotten. You know, you can keep food until it's rotten. Um, so I think Christ for the Nation does that pretty well. Objectively speaking, what is the best Bible school in America? Well, any Bible school that gets the knowledge from here is good, explaining the Bible, what Jesus said, that he's God. We know that he's God. We know that he rose from the dead. We know he's coming back again. These are the things, yes, they're good to know. And if, the church, if they're doing that, but the best thing is, is if they know about the supernatural, the gifts of the Spirit, not just the fruit of the Spirit, but you have both the gifts and the Spirit of the Lord working both in the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. And if there's a Bible school anywhere, Christ for the Nations does that on a daily basis. And we just began our new semester here in our, what is it, our 53rd, 54th year. This is our 54th year. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. That is impressive. There's not a lot of people doing something continuously for 54th year. So thank you for that. And you've always been very kind and, and a good friend to our ministry. So I appreciate that. And I hope that if you guys are looking at Bible schools uh, to go physically attend, come and check it out in Dallas, Texas. God bless you. And thank you, Pastor Steve. And I can't ever pronounce his name right, but I call it Chocolate. But that's close enough. And he says that's good enough. Yeah, I answered to that. <laughs>